Hey guys, welcome back to the second video of the NCAA Challenge. The last time I played as ULL and lost, or won, against Navy. And this time I am playing as UMass against Oregon. And yes, we had the same thought. I am screwed. <laughs> You'll see a lot of read options in this game because the player I was playing against ran a lot of read options in Oregon's uh, Wildcat. So you'll see a lot of that. You also see uh, a huge blowout coming. So be prepared for that. Uh, right there, you get to start it off right there with a nice little juke. The, my biggest thing was I did it because I've, I've been in that mode for so, such a long time playing these games. I'm going to play me about six now. Is I was doing quarterback and Tane while in the nickel, which I probably should have committed to the 4-4 like they did against Navy. And I didn't realize while I was playing that he was actually in the Wildcat. So I'm assuming with the quarterback and Tane, when they do that read option in, in the Wildcat, the D-line just crashes down instantly off that fake. And here I overmit the safety, and uh, I think he scored about six plays on this drive, which really bruised my ego. And you'll see here, like, no one is open. I think A was open for, like, a split second, but then that was gone. So I tried to lead X there, and I get picked off right away. And that's not how I want to start the game off at all, because I gave him a short field to work with, so I know it's going to score relatively soon, too. Here's the real quarterback, one of the few times that he's actually not in the Oregon Wildcat, and he gets a nice run up the middle, and goes again back to the Wildcat, nice run up the middle, gets the first down, and I was thinking to myself, you know, I hope he doesn't score a touchdown, but I was preparing myself for it, and then that happened. Nice, just small juke on the safety, and it's a quick touchdown, down 14 nothing early. Being down to 14 nothing hole early was not the way I wanted to start the game, but I figured, you know, uh, Colorado lost 70 to 14, so I wasn't that, you know, worried about being down 14 nothing as being UMass. And the biggest thing for me playing this game was that, and you'll see here the next play this halfback screen. I'm waiting for that back to break open, and when as soon as he does, I throw it, and the defensive end was just right on top of that, and it was kind of blew my mind here. And then here Hill. The entire game, he was pretty much the only receiver on the team on the offense that was doing anything for me. And I don't know if it's because he's, you know, rated a certain way or just because of the way the defense he was playing him. And I mentioned last week I wouldn't show punts unless something important happened. And clearly something important happened here. He returned for a touchdown. And I know Oregon's a fast team, so I tried to pin him against one sideline. I figured he'd try and cut it back the other way. And I tried to use my players to stop that, but it didn't work at all that time. And luckily in the future, I did punt it and do the same strategy. It did work, so I didn't have problem with that in the future and here's another screen here that's pretty much all i can do i mean short passes here and there i mean my offensive line really just got worked over a lot luckily he was uh three safeties deep on this play so i was able to scramble the middle for first down but that's about it as usual no one's open downfield so i take a gamble i throw it deep and uh i catch a break because he doesn't get another interception on me oregon's defense was just smothering my guys and then my guard just got completely bitched there and I mostly get pummeled because of that. And then here, I'm running that I ran that play that I ran in the last game. Where I usually threw where I threw to B, but this time it didn't open for me again and I'm forced to a fourth down. And the next time I punted, uh, I stopped him so it wasn't a big deal there. And I went in the second quarter down twenty one nothing, which wasn't how I envisioned his game going. But I mean the way I saw it it was that he got a pump return and a pick that set off his office in a short field, so I wasn't too upset about it. And then here's fourth down he goes for it with the no auto and tried to go up the middle and luckily I stopped him and I felt like you know being the 20 nothing being Oregon against UMass you don't need to go for a fourth down but I wasn't playing because I'm in a short field for me and probably a chance to score a touchdown or at least a field goal and look there's no one's open so I managed to scramble out for a few yards here and there and it gets injured of course so here comes my backup and again no one's open and my guard gets uh, beat off the ball and I get sacked for a big loss and it happened again right there fell on the ground but luckily Hill got open again for me and I got into the red zone for the first time in the entire game, so I was happy about that. And I felt like as long as I didn't throw another pick here, I could definitely uh, get touchdown. And you know, he threw it all up, let's at me and Hill. I did a nice little drag route and got a touchdown. And at this point, when I scored a touchdown, I was like, you know what? I scored a touchdown against Oregon as UMass. I don't even care anymore if he scores 70 points. You know, that's really how I felt about it. And then here came came third down. I was hoping I could stop him, try and get maybe another touchdown for halftime. But of course. Guess I saw a screen pass going there to the halfback and got a lot of yards there. And then this happened, and I was upset about this because I want I didn't want him to score any more points before halftime. And then this halfback just outran my entire defense. And being down 20 to seven, I was kind of like, oh my goodness, you know, I need to get something going in a minute to go. But I mean, here again, you see no one's open. I tried scrambling here, but my tackle did pick up the defensive end, so I got sacked for a big loss. And uh, the one thing that kind of bought me a little bit here again. 
I was like, he was calling timeouts on this drive, even though I was picking up, you know, small dots of yards, because I guess he was trying to get, you know, one more touchdown for halftime. I was thinking to myself, you know, I don't want that to happen. If I go down halftime, you know, 35 to 7, there's literally nothing I can do to make the game respectable at all. And then he made this big run happen, and I was like, it's going to happen. It's going to throw. It's going to run for a touchdown. But luckily, he kept doing the no huddle and ran to a pass play and overthrew the receiver there. And then he went right back to it, no huddle, uh, play action pass, and then he threw a pick here. And I was happy with that, with that pick to go into halftime down 27 as opposed to being down like 35 to 7. So I opened the second half thinking, all right, here comes my comeback. And then right out the gate, another pick, and I just totally killed all momentum that I could have had at all. I tried to leave my receiver, but that didn't work out at all. So he got a short field to work with. And uh, right here, he got a nice spin move off the missed tackle. And I thought I was actually going for a touchdown, but luckily, my defense held up to that play and home to a field goal, which I felt pretty good about, considering he was like was inside the 10 when that drive started. But that good feeling in pretty quickly because I threw yet another pick on back-to-back -back drives. <laughs> um, I tried to th fit it in between the corner and the safety, but I guess I should have known better being UMass. That's probably not possible, especially against a team like Oregon. And then he busted another huge run all the way back down to 10. So here he is again, throwing the score. And I was thinking to myself, you know, I'm digging myself into a huge hole right now. But what better way to pick yourself out of a hole than to throw yet another pick? Yes, that's exactly what I did. But thankfully, um, I switched my D-line to a quarterback spy instead of contain, and that worked a lot better, and I held him to another field goal, which was, you know, not great. But I mean, considering he could have gotten 14 points, I held him to only six. I felt a lot better about it, and I'm only showing this play just because it was a beautiful pass, but unfortunately this guy right here ruined for me with the holding call, so I totally killed any kind of drive. And then, why not? Let's throw another pick. <laughs> um, I'm really self-inflicting my own wounds here. That's why I'm down 44-7. to I mean, the game should be a lot closer, maybe even in my favor, or towards my favor at least. But again, um, no one's looking to try to squeeze that one in the X. And, I mean, there are guys somewhat open down the field on, on these future plays, but at this point, I think I had thrown, like, five picks, and I was just afraid to throw any kind of pass again. And, again, everyone was covered, so I tried to scramble again, but I got bottled up, which is a big problem for me. And then he goes quarterback pass, and I'm mad because it was the first time I actually had a chance to pick it off, and I think the uh, the cornerback ruined my chance to pick it off with the safety. So he goes back to a screen and gets a big gain here. And uh, just rolling along in the fourth quarter. Goes back to that read option. And then um, it was third and long, so I was hoping I could bottle him up and get, you know, a stop. But that didn't work. And length, thankfully, I got him on a holding call. But, of course, uh, the spy doesn't work out well when it scrambles out of the pocket. And I saw where he was going with the ball. And I was afraid to switch players. So I just didn't get there in time. And he converted the first and 20 for a big game. But, again, you know, the spy works about 10 times better than the quarterback contained when it comes to shutting it down. So it helped me out a few times, but obviously, you know, he still got a few yards here and there. So I felt good. I mean, he got a few plays off, but again, home to another field goal. So it's still, you know, a manageable game. But of course, uh, I decided to go, you know, let's go ahead and make it a blowout. I throw another pick. This time goes all the way a distance. And my tackle got absolutely punished on that play, and I got sacked for a big loss. So now at this point, I'm just trying to run the ball, run the ball and kill the clock. and. I mean, it's already way out of hand, and I wasn't trying to let him uh, boost his ego any longer than any bigger than it was. And then I throw yet another pick six off the screen to the raw receiver. Um, I was surprised. I think that's a linebacker that he caught this because usually those kind of passes don't get picked off when I kind of just, like, you know, throw them while getting hit. But I guess I got unlucky there. And then like he did in the first half, um, I got a few completions here and there and some runs that kept the clock going, but he stopped them every time with a timeout, so I guess he was thinking, I mean, he wanted to score 70 points, which I guess I understand. I mean, when you're playing against someone like UMass and you're up 61-7, to I mean, this rarely happens, but thankfully my quarterback spy is held up and I get the ball back, so I decided to kneel the ball out and end the game and before he actually does score 70 points on me. So that's how it went. I lost 61-7. to It's a huge blowout. Um, I threw seven picks. And here he goes, a scoring breakdown. This is the first game that I actually completed all the way through. So that's what I'm going to do for future games from now on, if I can actually uh, finish them all the way through, which is show you the box score. And uh, I mean, I did a pretty good job in the second half, considering, I guess, <laughs> I threw all these picks. And there you go, seven picks, seven turnovers. 
I mean, time possession is pretty much the same, which I was surprised to see at the end of the game. And they see my guy there, five sacks, seven picks. The run game was non-existent. I mean, this was a spread playbook, so I tried to stick to their strengths, but that clearly didn't happen. But at least now I know for the future games, when I come back to playing as UMass again, try and get a win, is that Hill is going to be my go-to guy all the way. And this is pretty much the end of the video. Um, I'm going to put in the description a link back to the thread, like in the first video, where you can go and predict uh, scores for my next game. And if you get lucky, pick my next team. This is about it, so thanks for watching again, and I'll see you guys next time.